which you're pouring, they are pouring water into the reactors, and then of course have to let that steam and pressure out in right. some way. Um, is that process over time giving us the slow motion equivalent of what a classic reactor meltdown would, would look like? And in the classic view, it happens quickly, there's a lot of release into the atmosphere. Here it's happened very slowly, and you pour in the water, you release it, and that process seems to be going on. Do you think over time that's going to be as damaging as if there no, had been? A uh, what the feed and bleed does is is it's a way. What you do is want to reach a steady state so that uh, as the c decay products in the reactor begin to lose decay and, and emit their energy, you want to be taking that energy out. On the first week or two. Which were, the first week is most critical, where the heat load is dramatically going. We passed that first week, and so now you're entering a slower stage where you still need to take the energy out of the reactors. Uh, but the feed and bleed means that you 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 put in now fresh water, and you release some steam. Uh, you want to minimize that because, quite frankly, when you release steam, you're actually reducing sure. some. Yes, and so what? What the Japanese government is doing, what our scientists and engineers on this side are helping think through as well, a way in order to get a secondary cooling loop so that you can actually inject uh, cooling water, take the heat out, but without releasing steam. Okay, but it's not as though you're just going to a slow meltdown. You're, you've reached a state you're taking energy out uh, due from the decay, and as long as that's stable, it's okay. But we prefer one would prefer not to be releasing the steam. The steam is being scrubbed the way the reactors are designed, but again, you know, you would want to go to cleaner ways of cooling down the reactor. 